This buggy looking brown and cream soft tackle is Jeff Gehring's A&W Emerger. And Jeff is a guide on the Little Missouri River in Arkansas, and he created this fly to represent the emerger phase of the March Brown Mayfly. This fly rides very high in the water column and is best fish but with short strips just under the surface, and the takes are often very aggressive. And we'll tie the March Brown version of Jeff's fly today, but this fly also works very well in other colors, such as this uh, dirty yellow color or an olive. The hook I'm using is a Daiichi 1270 in size 14, and it is their 3X long multi-purpose hook. It's a light wire hook, so it allows the fly to ride close to the surface of the water. This is also similar to the TMCO 200R. My thread is UTC 70 denier and tan, and I start my thread wrap about three eye lengths back from the eye of the hook. And that marks the front portion of the rear body and also where I'll tie in my soft tackle. I wrap my thread back down the bend to just above the hook barb, bring it back forward and let it hang just in front of the hook point, and then trim off that tag end. Now the tail and soft tackle for this fly both come from wild Hungarian partridge wings, and I use this because these have a natural brown speckled color that really matches the March brown quite well. For the tail fibers, I use a long feather near the top of the wing. Now I've already pulled out one of those feathers, and just to make things easy, I'm going to strip all these fuzzies off the bottom and strip some of these lower fibers off to get to those nice, straight, and a bit stiffer fibers. Now, I want about a dozen of these for this tail, so I pull down, and I don't like to count, so I pull down about three-eighths of an inch, that's three-eighths along the, of the shaft of the feathers, even up those tips and then strip them off the feather shaft. I transfer those feathers to my right hand. I'm a right-handed tire. And I want a tail that's about a hook shank in length, so I measure that, and then I transfer that measurement back to just above where my thread is hanging. And then I bring my left hand in and grab those feathers against my thumbs with my left hand. And I want to trim these feathers about even with the front of my thread base. So using that as a guide, I bring my scissors in and clip those feathers there. And giving my bobbin a good counterclockwise spin to uncord the thread so it'll jump to the rear, I take a couple of loose wraps and then wrap forward over the butts of those feathers. And then with my left hand, I pull the feathers toward me so the thread torque will, will tie the feathers on top of the hook shank and then make wraps all the way back down the hook shank to just above the hook barb and then bring my thread back forward and let it hang just in front of the hook point. The rear portion of the body of this fly is a custom dubbing blend of rabbit and hare's ear that approximates Jeff's color. And the recipe will be in the description of the video. But if you don't want to go to the trouble of creating your own dubbing blend, pretty much any March brown color will work just fine. We want to build a thin dubbing noodle that's about an inch and a half long. And with rabbit, you want to put just the sparsest amount of, of fur on the thread at any one time. And so begin creating that noodle, leave a little bit, half inch or so of bare thread near the hook and begin building that dubbing noodle. And here I have a noodle that's about an inch and a half long and I begin wrapping back toward the tail of the fly with that bare thread and begin dubbing the body just at the base of the tail of the fly, making touching wraps going forward up to that front edge of my thread base. And you notice the body on this fly is not tapered. And so I wrap to the front of the thread base and then let my thread hang. And if I want to trim those little fuzzy fibers, which I think I do from the hair's mask, I'll go ahead and trim those now. Our soft tackle for the fly is taken from one of the smaller feathers near the lower portion of the wing. Now here I've already pulled one of the feathers off and to begin prepping it, I want to get rid of all those fuzzy fibers near the base of the, the feathers. So I strip all of those off 
and then strip up the feather shaft until I have about a half to five eighths of an inch uh, feather fibers remaining. And that will give me a, a wing about the, the size that I'd like. Now to choose the size of the feather, you want to choose a feather where the barbules are about the same length as the hook shank. And this one looks pretty close. We want to tie in our feather with the concave side of the feather toward the hook shaft. And since we're going to tie this in by the tip, I begin to prepare the feather by grasping the tip of the feather with hackle pliers. And you can easily use your finger to do this as well. And then I pull the feather fibers back, exposing just that tip and holding the feather in my left hand. I take my scissors and trim off the tip, leaving just a very small triangle, which will serve as our tie-in point for the hackle. To tie in our feather, we place our feather against the hook shank with the point of that triangle right over our thread point and take a few wraps of thread between the triangle and the main feather then wrap down that triangle forward toward the hook eye, being careful not to crowd the hook eye. Now see I have a little dubbing fiber there, but I'll clean that up later. Bring our thread back to just in front of the hackle and let it hang there. To wrap our hackle, it makes it easier to grab it with some hackle pliers. And here I'm using some of those electronic test clips for hackle pliers. And I pull gently up on the feather because it, the stem breaks very easily. It's very fragile. And then I sweep back on the feather, sweep them rearward. And I'm really pinching them more than I'm actually pulling back on them because, again, I don't want to break those fibers. And I begin taking wraps around the hook shank. And with each wrap, I reach in and hold those fibers back to prevent the feathers from overwrapping each other and trapping any fibers. But if you trap a, a couple, it's no big deal because we'll sweep those back later. So with each wrap, I hold back and you can see here, I'm, I'm trapping a couple of fibers, but we'll take care of those. And I've had two wraps, three, this is the third, and we wrap until we get to bare stem. And then we hold the bare stem up at an angle and take a couple of thread wraps to the rear of that bare stem to bind it down. And then I like to take a few wraps in front of that bare stem to cinch in it even more. Reach in with our scissors, cut off the stem, and our hackle is tied in. The front portion of our body is again made with a custom dubbing blend, and this is rabbit tan and rabbit cream blended together. But if you don't want to blend these, just the, the cream will work fine by itself. And we grab just the tiniest wisp of this dubbing because we only want to build about a three quarters of an inch long dubbing noodle. And we want a really slim noodle as well. So we twist just a bit of that dubbing onto the thread and roll it to where it's quite thin. And here I have about, yeah, about a three quarters of an inch noodle. Holding back on those hackle fibers, we begin wrapping the dubbing just over the base of the hackle. And I take a second wrap because we're going to taper this head from back to the front. And then we begin wrapping forward toward the hook eye. And if the dubbing length is about right, we run out just behind the hook eye. To finish the fly, we take our whip finish tool and give it a three or four turn whip finish. Now I don't like to use head cement on this fly because it mats down the front dubbing. So I'm going to give it a second three or four turn whip finish. and then cinch down on that knot to tighten it, reach in with my scissors and cut off the tag end. Now let's take our scissors and come in and clean up around the head, cut that little piece of errant dubbing fiber I had earlier. And though it's not really necessary, I like to snip off some of these more errant fibers around the head. And that is our A&W March Brown Emerger. It is extremely effective when fish are feeding on emergers.